Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Ivernet's webinar on uh, how to improve customer experience and uh, help reduce the risk of fraud. I'd like to uh, start off by doing a quick, a quick introduction here to uh, myself and to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to, uh, to everybody. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, so my name is Jeff Young. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at Ivernet. I've been in uh, media and technology for around 22 years. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Southern Alberta. And uh, as you can see, I'm not farming, so I'm much better at computers than, than I am at farming. So uh, married with uh, three awesome kids. Excellent, thanks, Jeff. For myself, my name is Ryan Dowson. I'm a sales executive here with Ivernet. I've worked in business development for just over 22 years. Uh, it sounds a lot better than two decades. And uh, it's been across eight different industries. I've uh, been married for about 12 years and I've got one little girl who's eight, uh, going on 18, and I'm pretty sure she's got me wrapped around her little finger. But um, yeah, she's adorable. All right, so it should, uh, just to give you a breakdown of what we're gonna cover off today, it should take us around 20 minutes or less to review the material that we're gonna discuss today. And by the end, you should have a better understanding of how the contactless payment evolution uh, might affect your business. We're also going to look at the implications of taking payments over the phone, uh, some of the risks, and a simple and secure solution that you can look at. Uh, I'll pass it over to uh, to Jeff. Thanks, Ryan. You know, I guess as we start off here, there's a question that often uh, you know I hear, and I'm sure that many of you have heard as well. And that uh, question is, uh, you know, can I just give you my credit card number over the phone? Uh, it would sure be a lot easier if I could just pay for it now. And uh, then I'll just have my coworker come by later this afternoon and pick it up. So, you know, I know that, uh, you know, in business, uh, it happens and, and, and you may have even asked that question yourself. You know, funny enough, uh, this just happened to me the other day. I had ordered some parts and the trucking company who was delivering them asked for my credit card over the phone so they could release the parts to me upon arrival. So, you know, we realize that uh, in most situations, a customer will pay you know, at the till when they're in the store or they're going to pay online, uh, you know, but there are times that it's uh, more convenient for both the business and the customer to uh, just make a payment over the phone. And with uh, COVID and the restrictions that are happening and has become more commonplace, you know, the need for another contactless payment option uh, certainly has never been higher than it is today. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and that's really why we're here today. We want to discuss things that uh, we all need to be aware of when we're posed with that question. Can I just give you my credit card number over the phone? So uh, customers really do want to trust the companies that they do business with. And, you know, why shouldn't they? If a business accepts credit cards, then customers tend to assume that there's a secure process in place that isn't going to expose them to fraud. But the question becomes, how safe is that process? So you may be all be familiar with this, but typically you trust your employees and we go ahead and vet any new hires we have. We set up procedures for them to follow and to keep everybody safe. And if you wanted to take it a step further, what options do you have? Most people will respond with, well, I have a background check. I can go and investigate, um, pull a background report on, on this potential new hire, which makes sense. I mean, it's a due diligence process that gives us additional information and insights into a person's character. And uh, it gives us a little bit of peace of mind as well when uh, we can trust um, that the information is, is there. And, and really, we're trusting what is essentially a stranger uh, to handle critical aspects of our business. So the question is, how accurate is a background check? Well, it turns out it's not as accurate as we would all like it to be. The Professional Background Screening Association has openly stated that there is no single government database containing complete and up-to-date records regarding a person's criminal history. So that means that through no fault of our own, there are now information gaps in our due diligence process. And unfortunately, fraudsters are gonna use these information gaps to exploit businesses and get access to sensitive information. So we look at the types of schemes that are out there. There's a lot of very common ones. Uh, there's a list of them on there, dumpster diving. Some of these you've probably heard of before, social engineering, uh, phishing attacks, farming attacks. These are all the different types of um, 
I guess, I, 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 common schemes uh, that people use when they're trying to get that information. So um, it's out there, it's happening every day. Um, and it's something that we have to be aware of. Now, with the advent of EMV chips in 2015, uh, it helped to reduce in-store fraud by a solid 80%. That was extremely significant and it was a big boost to security for everybody. Um, unfortunately, at the same time, on October 1st, 2015, uh, cardholder and merchants agreement were updated to reflect um, what's known as a liability shift. So that means that merchants are now liable for any fraud that results from transactions on systems that are not EMV capable. So as such, uh, fraudsters have moved to target what they call card not present transactions. And this still remains a major and very costly issue. So as you can see, the stats in 2018, there were 7.9 million people that in the US were victims of card not present fraud. Uh, the same stats for Canada show that about 76% of total card fraud in the country comes from card not present transactions. And uh, card, not present, card not present fraud, sorry, is now 81% more likely than point of sale fraud. So you can see that this is now the new area that uh, these uh, scammers and fraudsters are targeting. And it even happens to the best of us. So in large or small, you look at companies like Yahoo, uh, First American, Facebook, Marriott International, these are well-established companies, uh, great reputations, and um, you know, how much do you think they spend a year on data security and, and background checks? They spend a lot. And yet somehow they still landed in the top of the list for some of the worst breaches of all time. So this tells us that fraud prevention requires a systemic process-driven change to the way the company handle and interact with sensitive data. And just of interest, uh, after Facebook's uh, situation in 2019, where, where they ended up uh, exposing 540 million users' information, in order for them to to plug that gap um, and to beef up their security after that incident, it cost them about $3.7 billion. So this is a, a very serious situation. So going back to 2006, um, the great strides were taken to help companies that accept credit card payments. And this was done through the creation of an independent council spearheaded by American Express, Discover, JCB International, MasterCard, and Visa. So it was helped, uh, formed to help merchants and financial institutions understand and implement standards for security policies, uh, technologies, and processes uh, that protect their payment systems from theft of cardholder data. Now, Ivernet uses these same standards in the creation of its solutions. So exposures. What does it look like? Well, exposures for non-compliance to PCI DSS uh, can extend well beyond monetary penalties. Think about uh, consumer confidence in your brand, for example, uh, trust issues. Fines can scale dramatically depending on the number of users affected, as well as reputational risks, which can be, which can be catastrophic, uh, affecting capital, share valuation, uh, market share, and social capital. It can get very, very expensive very, very quickly. Now, Looking at PCI compliance strategies, I hope that the majority of the people watching uh, say no to this question. But you know, if you're taking credit card numbers over the phone, is your staff writing them down? So what do they do with those little slips of paper afterwards? I mean, you write something down on a post-it note, and then what do you do with it? You throw it in the garbage, but the information's still on that. So how do you track those breaches? And are you confirming with each employee that this information is actually destroyed? Now, depending on the size of your business, that could be next to impossible. So our solution to help mitigate some of these risks and protect uh, consumer confidence is called Telepay. And it's a PCI DSS compliant tool that bridges the gap between data security and customer experience. Helps to reduce the risk of fraud. It's secure, it's convenient, and significantly reduces administrative costs. And we also have the ability to mitigate the risk of chargebacks by having the customer state their name during the payment process, which is then recorded for future proof if they ever should be needed. So Telepay is a PCI DSS compliant solution. It can be implemented in a couple of different ways. 
It can be implemented as a standalone solution set up on its own and operating independently of your platform, or we can look at a fully integrated solution uh, with all of your existing systems and processes. There's also a big gray area in between. So depending on the level of integration you're looking for, there's an almost infinite number of options that we can come up with in order to make this product fit into your current business processes. So I just want to take a, a minute here and identify why we're even doing this in the first place. What is it that drove us to come up with Telepay? Well, it comes down to freedom of choice and the fact that we believe in a limitless business without fear of identity theft or fraud. And we want to ensure that every transaction is structured to protect that sense of information. And we do this by using a platform that's easy to use, extremely secure, builds brand loyalty and is accessible from anywhere on the planet, even without an internet connection. We believe that consumers and businesses are entitled to transact business together without having to fear anything going wrong, without having to fear fraud. And that world I believe is possible. So understanding telepay, um, now more than ever, um, establishing a personal connection with your customers is critical. It, this represents what I would identify as the next logical step in the payments experience. It allows you to stay connected with your customers throughout the entire payment process and continue that conversation post-transaction as well. So why post-transaction? Well, it's your opportunity to engage with customers to boost brand loyalty. You can ask them for feedback. You can suggest other items to them. You can talk about um, maybe connecting on social media. It's a great opportunity for upselling. Um, and you can even ask them for product reviews or enroll them in some type of a loyalty program. Uh, you could administer a customer satisfaction survey for another example. There's lots of different reasons why you'd want to have that conversation with the customer after the transaction is complete. So a few stats around transaction brand loyalty uh, that were of interest. 86% of customers say that an emotional connection with a customer service agent would make them continue to do business with that company. 77% of consumers say they favor brands that ask for and accept customer feedback. And 93% of consumers are more likely to make repeat purchases at companies with excellent customer service. So, how does all of this work and how does it all come together? Well, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff and he's going to walk you through it. Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, so when we work with an organization, you know, we provide payment solutions that align with their business processes and goals, as, as Ryan's previously mentioned. Uh, some organizations like a high touch payment option that involves their uh, customer service agents. Others prefer to minimize staffing involvement and uh, direct customers to an, uh, an automated attendant. Um, with our basic contact center solution, uh, we integrate uh, into an existing contact center's workflow. Uh, I won't get into each stage of the call flow that you see here on the screen, but to summarize, uh, this integration enables an agent to speak with a customer, uh, create an invoice uh, for the amount purchased using our telepay invoicing software or their own invoicing system and uh, forward the customer through to the Telepay auto attendant to make a payment. So this solution works really well for organizations wanting to have that high touch connection with the customer where an invoice can be created on the fly and uh, payment received immediately. Uh, our advanced contact center integration is similar to the one I just mentioned, only in this scenario, uh, when the agent transfers the call into Telepay, they stay on the line and can communicate back and forth with the customer during the transaction process. When the customer enters the uh, payment information, the what we call the dial tone multi-frequency, uh, you may have heard it as DTMF, is muted so that the agent uh, doesn't actually hear any of the payment details, uh, maintaining PCI compliance. And then once the payment has been made, uh, the agent remains on the line to answer any other questions the customer may have. Um, it's very much like an in-store experience at, at the checkout counter, uh, enabling an organization to leverage the uh, post-transaction opportunities that Ryan previously mentioned. Uh, plus, the agent will know if the payment was successful during the call and assist uh, along the way should the customer have any issues during the payment process. 
So this solution is very popular with call centers or collection agencies who are compensated on closing deals or collecting on overdue accounts. Um, you know, we can also do customized telepay integrations like Ryan mentioned earlier, uh, where an organization may have you know, multiple locations and multiple business systems. And lastly, um, it's our out of the box telepay solution. And it uh, provides customers the ability to call into a telepay number to make a payment. Uh, the telepay phone number can be included on an invoice along with any other payment uh, options such as online payments. Um, this is a very popular solution where uh, customers already have an account set up and receive monthly invoices for a service or a product. Um, this solution can also be used um, where the phone number is provided you know, on a call uh, with a certain uh, unique identifier where the uh, customer can then make that call instantly and make a payment. So examples of this would include industrial supply companies for their contractor customers, uh, utility companies for monthly water bills as an example, and also uh, homeowner associations for their annual fees. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you know, whether your business prefers a personalized high touch or an efficient no touch engagement with your customers, our solutions can align with, with your needs. Brian? Excellent. Thank you very much, Jeff. So uh, just to kind of wrap it up and bring it back uh, to the, the highlights and the points, uh, in a nutshell, you can give your customers another contactless payment option with a bolt-on solution. It's going to integrate with your existing systems. It doesn't have to. It can be a standalone if you'd like. Uh, but the option is there. And we recognize that PCI DSS compliance is also a very arduous task. Uh, it involves many, many different steps and a lot of uh, effort and teamwork from uh, various different departments to bring it all together. So um, we've already done all that work for you. And this saves you money from having to create a PCI DSS environment internally. Uh, it eliminates some of the cumbersome practices like shredding paper containing handwritten credit card numbers. Uh, we've done all that. We've put it all together in this in this package for you. Um, credit card numbers. Uh, credit card numbers are only exposed to the customer using Telepay. And the payment is processed in real time. So both the customer and the agent are immediately notified of the transaction status. And then with Telepay's advanced call center integration solution, as Jeff was uh, previously talking about, agents are able to continue that conversation with a uh, customer after the transaction for uh, would be a, essentially a full cycle uh, customer experience. And again, great opportunities for post brand loyalty. So that kind of brings us to uh, the end uh, of our webinar. I wanted to thank everyone uh, who's able to join us today and participated. And uh, for the people who were participating today, uh, we understand that this is, of course, uh, a very important decision for you and your teams. Uh, so we want to help in whatever way that we can. Uh, decisions like these involve various stakeholders, and uh, one of the best tools at your disposal is information. So as a thank you for joining us today, uh, we're happy to provide a free analysis, uh, needs analysis of where your organization might benefit from a solution like Telepay. Uh, there's no obligation to continue further. However, it may help you narrow down some critical areas to focus on. Jeff, any closing words? No, I just wanna again, thank everybody for their time. And uh, like Ryan mentioned, you know, uh, we're all about simplifying processes. And so if we uh, can do that for you, please get in touch with us. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye.